Well, my early 20s were mostly upside down, financially. I always found myself in a financial pinch when an unexpected event turned my life upside down. Whether it's a sudden job loss or medical emergency or major car repair, these unforeseen circumstances were always wreaking a havoc in my financial life because I was not prepared. So in this video, I'll go over seven steps to build an emergency fund and give you a plan to start an emergency fund with just $1. Life is full of unexpected events and emergency fund serves as a financial safety net. It provides you with peace of mind and the stability to weather the life's unexpected storms. Now, majority of us living in a financial situation where we're having a hard time making our ends meet and building an emergency fund on a low income can be very difficult. But don't get me wrong, it's not impossible. Not only it's a possibility, but it's actually an absolute necessity, especially on a lower income. So these following actionable steps, along with my personal experiences and resources, would help you make the process of starting your emergency fund a lot easier. Step one, evaluate your financial health. Before you start building an emergency fund, you need to evaluate your income and your expenses to gain clear understanding of your financial health. You need to identify potential risk and emergencies that could impact your finances. And only after that, you can set a realistic, and the keyword here is realistic, financial goal that aligns your financial situation and with your circumstances. In 2023, the average family in the United States spent about $72,967 every year. That's like spending $6,081 every month. Most of this money goes to things like where they live, which costs about $24,298 a year. That's almost one third of all the money they spend in a year. Now let's talk about how much money families save. In April 2023, the amount of money saved by people in the United States was $802.1 billion. When we look at how much they save compared to what they can spend, it's about 4.1%. This is like saving about 4 cents from every dollar they can spend after paying things that they must have, like food and place to live. The average income for a family in the United States in 2022 was $74,580 a year. So if families spend about $72,967 a year, and make $74,580 a year, they don't have a lot of extra money to save. That's why their saving rate is only about 4.1%. Now, I'll reveal the budgeting hacks that can supercharge your savings without feeling the pinch. Step two, calculate your ideal fund size. Start by determining your monthly expenses. Consider essentials like rent, mortgage, utilities, groceries, transportation, and insurance. Next, evaluate the duration of your emergency fund. Financial experts like American Express and Wells Fargo generally support the three to six months guideline. On the other hand, some like Suze Orman advocates for more around eight to 12 months, particularly for significant emergencies. But in my personal opinion, this might vary depending on individual circumstances. Consider factors like jobs, stability, dependence, and health when you're setting a fund size. For example, if you're a contract worker with inconsistent income, you may want a large emergency fund in case you had a period where business is slow. But what if you're starting from scratch? Don't worry, our next step is a game changer. Hi, my name is Sister Rivers. I'm a realtor and a diversified investor. And on this channel, I make finance videos for emergencies. Consider liking this video as this helps this channel and videos like this significantly. Step three, starting an emergency fund from scratch. Create a budget to free up funds for emergency savings. A detailed budget that tracks your monthly expenses and income identifies areas where you can reduce expenses without sacrificing quality of your life. I don't recommend trying to cut all of your expenses. As I've mentioned before, money is a tool for happiness. The most important reason of having money so we can afford to do the things that we like to do and enjoy life. But if you don't have an emergency fund saved up, you may want to consider cutting back on discretionary expenses just for a short period of time though, so that you can create a financial safety net. You may want to even a bare bones budget. This is where you cut all of your spending except only the necessities. You should only do this bare bones budget just for a short period of time. If you really need to jumpstart your emergency fund for your expenses, you can negotiate your bills and explore other cost cutting strategies like comparison shopping. You would want to increase your income to grow your emergency fund even faster. For your income growth, explore different ways that you can increase your income. Consider side hustles, freelance work, or monetize a hobby that you have. In the US, about 16% of adults make some sort of cash through gig platforms in 2021, doing things like house cleaning, food delivery, and other tasks. Delivery jobs are super popular, and a lot of people, especially young adults between the ages of 18 to 29, 
are getting into gig economy. Many folks have side hustles, with around 39% of American adults have one. They usually make about $810 a month from extra gig. And guess what? 42% of people with lower income need their side hustle just to cover daily expenses. The money gig workers make varies a lot, from $1,080 to $11,130 a month. It turns out that a lot of companies, one in four workers, is doing some sort of gig work. Platforms like DoorDash, Uber are big players. DoorDash, for example, has had over 13 million people working as a delivery driver since it started, and most of them work less than 10 hours a week. Uber's worker made a whopping $5.4 million in just the last three months of 2022. More than 23 million Americans have earned money through online platforms in the past year. Now you make money to build a fund, but where to store this growing fund? The next step is very important. Step four, setting up the emergency fund. If you're going to have a savings, you need to put your money somewhere that makes sense. And I mean, actually makes sense. You want your money to work for you a little bit instead of you just working for the money. Choose a right type of account, preferably the one that offers easy access to your money and perhaps some interest growth. The average annual percentage yield or APY for traditional brick and mortar banks or banks in your local neighborhood is approximately 0.46% as of November 2023, according to the FDIC data reported by Forbes. Now, this figure represents a slight increase from earlier this year. Bankrate, in its survey of institutions, reports a slightly higher national average yield for savings account at 0.6% APY. But here's the catch. These brick and mortar banks often charges fees like $5 to $20 a month for just having an account. So instead of saving money, you'll end up losing some of it. On the other hand, best high yielding savings account, typically online, offers APYs of up to 5% or more, significantly higher higher than the national average. Most of these online accounts don't require any minimum balance or have any fees and you can just start with zero dollars. Just being able to save on the fees every month would have a compound effect at the end of the year. My advice? Put your emergency fund in an online savings account separate from your checking account. This way, you won't be tempted to spend it and make the same mistake that I have made in the past. But it's not only about stashing away cash, it's equally important to shield it. In the next step, I'll go over keeping your hard-earned money safe. Step 5. Protecting your emergency fund. Now, your savings wouldn't really matter if you don't protect it properly. Create a safety net by securing insurance coverages for your health, your home, your car, and another areas of vulnerability. Be diligent about replenishing the fund after you use it for emergencies and resist the temptation to dip into it for non-emergency purposes. Hear from the guy who has gotten into his emergency fund to buy shit that he didn't really need. Now, changes in life are inevitable. As your life changes, so is your income, so is your expenses, and so should your emergency fund. And how you adapt to this is on the next step. Step six, keeping your fund on track. Review and reassess your emergency fund to ensure that it can fulfill your need not only at the time of your emergency, but also at the time when you're building the fund. We all go through life-altering experiences, such as new job, marriage, or birth of a child. Any of these changes requires our adjustment to our finances. Periodically, reevaluate your expenses and saving strategies to ensure that you are aligning with your evolving financial circumstances. Don't hesitate to make changes that you see fit. It's not one-size-fits-all type of scenario. Your finances are set to be designed what works for you. Therefore, changes has to be made what you feel comfortable with and what you want to make changes to. Speaking of changes, I see 90% of my viewers are not my subscriber. Now, I have a goal to grow this community 1000 strong by the end of the year. Consider joining the community by clicking the subscribe button below. It makes the subscribe button do some weird things. And finally, Step 7. The plan. As promised earlier, here's how you can start building an emergency fund with just $1. It's called a 52-week money challenge. It's super easy and fun and anyone with any income demographic can start. Start building an emergency fund by saving $1 the first week, then $2 the next week, and keep adding $1 each week. By the end of the year, you will have $1,378 saved up. Now, that's a big deal if you're starting from zero. Now, this challenge is good for almost everyone because it also lets you slowly increase your income and your savings. You can also set a yearly saving goal. Just divide your goal by 12 to know how much to save each month. Now, any type of savings requires you to have a budget. Budget works like a map to achieve the savings goal that you wish for. If you want to know about the budgeting steps that I regret not doing sooner, watch this video here. Thank you for hanging out with me. Consider liking and subscribing. See you in the next video. Be vigilant. Be diligent. Be diligent about diligent. Digilent. Wow.